when we calculate the concentration of a solution, we use a term called molarity. And molarity is telling us how much solute is dissolved in a solvent. So if something asks for the concentration, in this class it's going to be asking for the molarity of that thing. And then we use two basic terms that you've probably heard just in your regular life to describe the concentration of something. If something is concentrated, that is considered a high amount of solute. And if something is diluted, it's considered a low amount of solute. Of course, that's all relative to how much solvent you have and the temperature and how much it's able to dissolve, all that. So for molarity, if we're going to quantify how concentrated something is, that's really what this answer is telling us. Um, it's the number of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. The equation that we use to calculate molarity is that capital M for molarity is equal to the moles of solute per liter of solution. However, from a practical standpoint, because moles are not something that we measure in lab, we typically convert this or use something that we actually measure in lab, which is grams. But we have a really easy, straightforward conversion factor between moles and grams called molar mass. So that's why you needed your periodic table for today. So we will use molar mass almost all the time in this um, to find the number of moles. So sometimes, just for the sake of a question, I can give you the number of moles or ask for the number of moles. But um, when it comes to actual like lab-based application, we don't ever measure moles in lab. Where there's no such thing as that. We measure grams. And then if you need a refresher on molar mass, do you remember what the units are for that or how we use it? It's like Yes, the number of grams per mole. So your molar mass is your grams per mole. Or another way to say that is that one mole of any substance is equivalent to not quite. What? Yes, the mass from the periodic table. So one mole of that substance equals the mass from the periodic table. So what you've maybe learned is like atomic mass before, we use that same number for molar mass. So example A says how many grams of sodium sulfate would you need to dissolve in water to make one liter of a 1.0 molar solution? So if our equation is that molarity equals moles per liters, and I want it to be one molar, and this is asking for the number of grams. Well, we need to find moles, but we can get grams at the end. That are in one liter of that solution. This question is just basically another way of asking what is the molar mass of that um, compound. So we would find moles. which in this case is just one. And then I'm going to convert that to grams. By using the molar mass conversion. So to find the molar mass of sodium sulfate, I need my periodic table. Sodium is here, so the number I would use for its molar mass is 22.990. And sulfate is up here that doesn't have a molar mass listed for it, but you guys have done this enough times that hopefully you remember already that you would just use the elements that make it up. So I would count for sodium and SO. 
there are two sodium atoms times the 22.990. There's only one sulfur, so that would be 32.06. And there are four oxygens, and I'd multiply that by 15.999. Add all of those together, and then that would give us our molar mass. So I'll give you a second to calculate that yourself. All right, so I calculated 142. 0.036 grams per mole, which means that one mole of this substance, since that's the number of moles that I would need to make one liter of a one molar solution, so that tells me that my actual answer is just going to be the molar mass, so that number of grams would be needed. So if I'm going to use sig figs, so remember that we don't actually round molar mass to the number of sig figs. However, if your answer or if your question is asking you to calculate a number of grams, it's not asking for molar mass, it just happens to equal that same thing. We would round this to the correct number of significant figures. So in this one, um, 1.0 liters, 1.0 molar, both of those have two sig figs, so I would round this to just 140 grams. So the only time that you're going to keep all of the digits and not just completely round it to sig figs is when the answer asks you for straight up molar mass. What is the molar mass of this thing? You're going to keep all of the digits since all of those digits came directly, directly from the periodic table and we're trusting that as accurate. Basically a conversion factor. Letter B says an IV solution contains 683.4 grams of glucose in 100 milliliters of solution. What is the molarity of the solution? So our um, equation is still the exact same thing that oops, molarity equals moles per liter we're looking for molarity so we're going to be solving for M I don't have the number of moles but I can get the number of moles by converting from grams and I don't have the number of liters, but I can get the number of liters of solution by converting that. So I'm going to, I'll erase that just so we have more space. I'll start with 683.4 grams of C6H12O6. I need to convert that into how many moles of glucose this would be. So I would bring grams of C6H12O6. 1206 to the bottom and one mole of C6H1206. So that number of grams is going to be the molar mass of glucose. So take a second and calculate that from your periodic table. And then separate from that, several of you probably already know just off the top of your head how many liters this would equate to. But if you are not sure or you are not 1000% confident in your answer, use a T-chart to convert it. I see students all the time make the mistake of knowing, oh, okay, milliliters to liters, that's a thousand, and they multiply by a thousand. But that's not always what you're doing. You're multiplying or you're dividing depending on which way you're going. So if you set it up with a t-chart, that's why we do it this way, because it gives you that answer. So if you start with milliliters, bring milliliters to the bottom and put liters on the top, you do that so that your milliliters cancels. So if you are very familiar with this process, that will tell you every single time if you're multiplying or dividing. So then you put in your conversion factor here between liters and milliliters. Do you remember what that is? A thousand. A thousand what? Milliliters. Perfect. Okay, 1,000 milliliters to a liter. And so since 1,000 is on the bottom, that means that you are dividing in this case. So 100 divided by 1,000. Do you know how to do that? Maybe. If you don't know how to do it, plug it into your calculator. Point but one. it's what? Point 0.1. Point 0.1. So we're going to write 0 0.1 because we don't like those um, free floating decimals. All right, so 0 0.1 liters is going to be my denominator, and then I still need to calculate my molar mass of glucose. So take a second and do that on your periodic tables. All right, when you calculated your molar mass, you should have gotten 180.156. And then to figure out the number of moles that that's equivalent to, you would type in 
180.4 divided by 180.156. And that gives me how many moles? Um, you can round this number to sig figs. So when you divide it. Just three? How many fi sig figs should this have? What, remember, every time we do conversions, you only use the number of sig figs as the first number. So if this has four sig figs, my final answer should have six, four sig figs. This isn't my final answer, but that's fine if I cut it off at four. So three point what? Okay, three point seven nine three moles of glucose. Then I would put that for moles in as my numerator, and then this number for liters would go as my denominator. So three point seven nine three divided by point one. Basically, we're just moving the decimal over. So what is my answer? Molarity equals no. What'd you say? I think you said it. 37.93. If you don't know how to divide this in your head, plug it into the calculator. You will have a calculator available to you on every single thing that we do in here. So 37.93. And then our unit is also a capital M. That stands for molar. So the variable is called capital M for molarity, but then capital M also stands for molar, which is the unit. That's an R, molar. So 37.93 molar, that's a super strong solution. Something I want to point out before we flip to the next page um, is that in the definition of molarity, it is the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. It does not say per liter of solvent or per liter of water or anything like that. It's per liter of solution. Most times this doesn't actually really matter that much. Um, However, it can make a difference if you have something that would take up a lot of space. So what I mean is that when you make your molar solution, what you're going to do is first of all calculate the molar mass of your solute. Then you are going to measure out that number of grams, so the number of grams from, a, from whatever the molar mass was, of your solute. Into the actual container where you will be making your solution. So into, we'll say a beaker Flash. A volumetric flask is what we use oftentimes for this. Um, that has accurate measuring. So you have to be able to measure an accurate volume. So the reason I'm saying a beaker is not the best for this is because we don't use beakers for measuring. A lot of our beakers aren't really um, marked very accurately at all. Like you can be off by a good 50 milliliters and not even notice it. Um, so measure the solute into a beaker or flask that has accurate measuring. But not all beakers are like that. Some beakers have a lot of markings, and so you can actually measure volume in them. And then, so what you have at this point, if you calculate molar mass, you measure out the number of grams. Let's say that this is able to measure accurately, so you've got plenty of markings on here, whatever. If you have your solid solute in your beaker, depending on how many grams that actually is, I know these are starting to look like lines instead of dots depending on how many grams your molar mass actually is and how many grams you measure out and how big your beaker is, that is going to take up sometimes an insignificant amount of space, but it's going to take up some space. Does that make sense? 
Maybe? No? Makes some sense. Some sense? Yeah. Okay, so the amount of solute that you measure into your beaker takes up some space. Like, it doesn't matter how much, like, it sometimes matters how much. So if you measure out, let's say, 100 grams of your solute, because that's its molar mass, it's taking up space in that beaker. That space needs to be accounted for when you make your liter of solutions. And this is, since this is all about the volume, if we're measuring it in mass, um, when we fill it up, so then the last step in this would be to fill up. So fill to the one liter mark of, I want to say with solvent. Honestly, I've never made a solution that doesn't have water as its solvent, but I guess there are ways that you could do that as well. So usually water, probably always water. The reason that it matters that you do it in this order in the same container is because the amount of liters of your entire solution is meant to equal one liter or um, I feel like a visual might help this. I'm going to pause real quick. The next question says, will the volume of the solute always be greater than, less than, or equal to the total volume of the solution, and why? So, it would always be less than. Okay, so the volume of the solute will always be less than the total volume of the solution, but why is that? Perfect. Excellent. All right. Because the solution is the solute and the solvent mixed together, and because of how we measure it, um, you're going to add more water to your solute. So it's going to make the volume larger. So the volume of the solute is always less than the, solu than the solution. Because I said so. So if you missed that, you can watch the video, go back. So it will always be less than the solution because of the way that we make it. Because when you measure out the volume of your, or the mass of your solute, you are adding to that. So by definition, it's going to increase when you um, make your solution. And then I'm going to jump down real quick just to give you this section. And we'll come back and we'll do that one later. Number two is over diluting solutions. So this is when we take a concentrated solution, we'll call that your stock solution, and preparing a less concentrated solution. So when we do this, you would take your initial molarity, or usually it's going to be the molarity of your stock solution, times your initial volume, again, the volume of your stock solution, and set that equal to the molarity that you want and the volume that you want. So molarity of solution two and the volume of solution two. This equation is probably the number one thing that I use as your teacher. When I make solutions for you all, every single time we do this, I'm using a stock solution, diluting something to be the concentration that we want it to be and the volume that our class is actually going to use up. The reason for this is that when we do like purchasing, for example, um, like good practice is to buy like a concentrated solution and then just dilute it to whatever you need it to be instead of paying for water effectively. Um, we'll pay for a super, super strong solution and then it doesn't take up that much space and you can get it watered down to whatever you need it to be. But if you have something that's not as concentrated, not as strong, then it's a lot harder to get that to be the right molarity. So for example, this says what volume of two molar calcium chloride stock solution would you use to make 0 0.50 liters of 0 0.300 molar calcium chloride solution. So these numbers might not mean anything to you right now, but if you think about it from a logical standpoint, if my stock solution is this, so what this is asking is for the volume of the stock solution, this is the concentration of my stock solution, and I'm trying to make this much of my less concentrated solution. Will the volume of my stock solution be greater than or less than the volume that I'm trying to make? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. So my question is, if I am starting with a solution that is two molar, that's the concentration of it, and I'm trying to make a solution that is less concentrated, tell me like just plain words, how would I do that? If you have a strong solution, a stock solution, and you are trying to make something that is less strong, assuming that your solvent is water, what would you do? You would add water to it. If you add water to your solution, then is the volume of your final solution or your initial solution going to be larger? Which one's going to have a higher volume? The second one, because you added water to get that one. So that tells me, without doing any math, just by understanding what's happening in this scenario, you should be able to predict that the volume of this solution that you're going to need should be less than the volume of what you're trying to create since we're making a less concentrated version, which means that we're watering it down. It doesn't specifically say in here that it's using water, but again, I've never seen a solution where water, like a solution in this context where we're talking about molarity, where water's not the solvent. So maybe it could be, and I've just never seen it, but we'll assume water. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're diluting it, we're watering it down. That's why this is called the dilution equation. Um, so I would use M1V1 equals M2V2. It technically doesn't matter if you assign ones or twos as your stock solution or your diluted solution. Um, what matters is that you associate the correct molarity with the correct volume of solution at that molarity. So I'm going to take my M1, which is two molar, times my V1, which is what I'm looking for, oops, times V1, which is what I'm looking for, set that equal to my new molarity, my less concentrated molarity of 0 0.3, and my new volume of 0 0.5. So then I'd multiply 0 0.3 by 0 0.5. That gives me 0 0.15. And then divide that by 2 because I need to get V by itself. So if I do that divided by 2, then V1 would be equal to what? 0.075. Perfect. The other thing that I didn't mention, um, but is the case for all equations that are set up like this, um, the units that you put in are the same units that you're going to get out. So molarity is really straightforward since we only measure molarity in molar as the, the unit. Um, but for volume, you can measure volume in liters or in milliliters. So if you put liters into the equation, you're going to get liters out. If you put milliliters in the equation, that's okay. You can, you'll get milliliters out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. The question was, do you use sig figs? Yes. So then it's 0 0.075. So zero is you just asked a question, answered it incorrectly, and then corrected yourself. Yeah. It was beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I was all for it. I was like, yep, all right, two sig figs, yep. So this one has three sig figs, this one has two sig figs, this one has three sig figs. So our answer should have two to match the least number of significant figures. This one has two sig figs. 0 0.08 would have had just one. And what's our unit? Um, Lovely. What? All right, let's stop there and go ahead and do our lab.